Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Excelsior. Thanks for your support. That said, let's get started. Welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. We're just wrapping things up at the Ruined Tower, and uh, we're about to head back to Stag's Fall to see if anything new popped up in our absence. Of course, we did go up a level last time, so uh, let's take care of that before we do anything else. First up, we've got Silverleaf, and uh, he'll obviously take a level of Alchemist. That gets him a new Discovery, but also gets him the Directed Blast ability. It's essentially the uh, Dragon Breath Bomb Discovery, but with twice the normal range. That's a pretty massive boost to his crowd control abilities, because not only can he now inflict massive damage to large groups of enemies, but thanks to the precise bomb's discovery, he also leaves his teammates completely untouched. Next we have to choose his discovery, and uh, there's actually a lot of good options here. At a glance, I'm partial to explosive bombs, or maybe tanglefoot bombs. Though it is worth noting that there are several new options that were added by the uh, recent Varn Holds a Lot DLC. This includes some rather intriguing new discoveries like Feral Wings and Nauseating Flesh, which unfortunately don't really fit our current build. We'll just keep things simple and go with explosive bombs instead. That's a pretty solid upgrade to our standard bombs effectively doubling the blast radius and uh, adding a chance for extra fire damage over time. Next we've got our skill points, and uh, that's pretty straightforward. We'll boost everything but nature lore. And that brings us to Silverleaf's new spell. Again, he's got a lot of good options here, but um, we'll grab Blur for now. That's a pretty solid defensive buff. That's pretty much it for Silverleaf. Next up we've got Valerie, and she'll obviously get another level of Fighter. That gets her a uh, bonus feat, as well as another rank of Burst Barrier, which is basically just a plus one bonus to reflex saves. Then we've got her skill points, and uh, one point will immediately go into Persuasion. After that, it doesn't really matter where her other two points go. Valerie's never going to be a skill-based character. I guess we'll just toss them into nature lore. That way she can serve as a backup hunter if anything ever happens to Amiri. Then we've got that bonus feat, and this is really a no-brainer. We'll be grabbing Cornigan Smash, which is, of course, why we've been raising her persuasion skill. It basically gives her a free Intimidate check against anyone she hits in combat, which, if successful, will saddle them with a minus two penalty on most of their combat rolls. Next we've got Amiri, who, of course, will stay focused on offense. She gets another level in Barbarian, which gets her another Rage Power, and gets her a second rank in Danger Sense, which basically just makes her slightly more resistant to traps. She gets four skill points, so we'll just spread those evenly across her current skills. Minus mobility. Then she gets a new rage power, and uh, honestly, there aren't a lot of good options here. We can't actually boost her damage reduction until level 8, so I think it really comes down to renewed vigor or animal fury. Between those, I'm personally leaning towards Animal Fury, which grants her an extra bite attack while she's raging. It's a little extra offense, and it will let us get some use out of that Cloak of the Winter Wolf we found. Then we've got Harem, who, as usual, is our quickest level up. He gets a level in Cleric. He puts his skill points into Religion and Perception. And that's it for Harem. Then we've got the little lady Lindsay, who of course will stay focused on being a bard. That gets her a bard talent, and the ability to fascinate enemies with her bardic music, 
I'll admit, I've never really experimented with that ability much, so uh, you'll have to tell me if it's actually worth using. I always worry about friendly fire when it comes to that sort of thing. Skill points go into thief skills. And she's got one point left over, so we'll put that into use magic devices. Then we've got her bardic talent, and um, we could go with weapon focus like it's recommending. That's not a bad choice. I'm just not sure I'm ready to actually lock her down to a single weapon. We've got her using a light crossbow right now, but there are some pretty nice heavy crossbows later down the line. Instead, let's get her something a little more universal, like Deadly Aim. That doesn't restrict her to just one weapon. Then we've got her spell, and again, we've got a lot of good options here. Silverleaf does have a lot of these covered, so we'll focus on spells that only she can get. Like Sense Vitals here, which would give her a significant short-term boost to her sneak attack damage. Then again, we do want Lindsay to have some tactical flexibility, so we might actually be better off with a spell like Glitter Dust here. That's obviously a very situational spell, but it can be important when you're up against enemies with concealment or invisibility, and it's uh, pretty well suited to a spontaneous caster. Though, as usual, I am open to second opinions. Be sure to let me know what you guys think of that choice. And that finally brings us to Tristian, who gets one step closer to becoming a mystic Theurge. Just uh, two more levels now. This should pay off by level 8. In the meantime, he's getting another level of Imperial Sorcerer, which gets him... Um, Celestial Resistances, which grants him 5 points of damage reduction against Acid and Cold Attacks. And it adds the Bless spell to his spell list, which means we can uh, finally start thinking about retiring that Blessed Signet once we find something to replace it with. Then he gets three skill points, and uh, we will put one point into Persuasion, but we have to spread him a bit thin to meet the requirements for Mystic The Urge. At this point, most of the other party members already have these skills covered. We'll just dump his last two points into Perception. That's one of the few skills where it makes sense to stack it on multiple characters. He gets a new spell, and uh, I think our best bet here is Magic Missile, which is a nice basic spell that automatically hits and uh, bypasses most damage resistance. And that's it. That takes care of our level ups. Anyway, be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comments below. No mistakes. For now, though, let's hit the pause button so I can uh, get these new spells slotted and get these taskbars cleaned up. We'll be right back. All right, let's get back to it. Strength fades. Hmm. We should gather our strength. All right, well, we're overloaded, so uh, that means we'll have to set up camp. Otherwise, we won't be able to leave again without dropping something. Oh, Amiri, someday you'll learn how to hunt. Overgrown Pool The river makes a sharp bend here, widening into a deep pool dotted with lily pads and fringed with waving reeds. Several freshly felled trees lie beside their stumps on the shore of the pool, their crowns dangling in the water among fading tendrils of mist. Well, that certainly sounds... portentous.
Okay, we can clearly hear people talking nearby, so let's proceed with caution here. As it should be. Looks like we've clearly walked into the middle of a standoff here. Let's get ourselves buffed up and uh, then we'll intercede. Adventures call to them. Confide in me. All right, let's see what's going on. A group of hardy people with axes, most likely lumberjacks, are menacing a fragile Nixie. Two lumberjacks stand before her, relaxed and disconnected. The lean lumberjack shakes his fist at the Nixie and yells, Let them go, you swamp freak. If you don't, I'll burn this rotten grove to the ground, on my word. You're the freaks, and my name is Meliancy, thank you very much. If you keep being rude like this, I'll just drown these jumbos in the lake, understand? Noticing you, the lead lumberjack grins and waves. You there, you seem a capable sort. Interested in some coin? Name's Korax and we're loggers here in this forest. We could use your help in freeing our people from this Gorgon's claws. We should help her. No, them. Uh, I don't know. Why can't people and Faye live in peace? What's going on here? We were minding our own business, cutting trees and splitting logs, when this hag shows up out of nowhere, screeches at us, then jinxes two of ours and threatens to drown them. With these fae breeding like rabbits everywhere, what's an honest, hard-working man to do? Stupid Jumbo, you're the ones who breed like rabbits, spreading into more and more space. We've lived here since forever. I've grown these trees for more than a hundred years, know them down to the tiniest leaf, and then you show up with your stupid axes to ruin everything. All right, I think I see what's going on here. Let them go, Meliancy. These people have families. You wish. Soon as I let them go, the whole lot of them will attack. If these goons want to go home to their stupid families, they're going to have to promise to steer clear of my grove first. Listen to me, people. The loggers exchange glances, holding their hand on their axes. The forest is big. I'm sure you can find other trees to fell. You tell the lumberjacks about a nearby grove where fine trees grow and no fay have taken up residence. All right, all right. It's not like we were dead set on this grove in the first place. If she gives us back our people, we'll leave the place in peace. On my word. Meliancy, they'll leave this place and never return. Please, release the hostages now. Oh, sure. And who's going to bring back my trees then? They come in here, smash everything in sight, and then just leave? No deal. Fix what you broke, then maybe I'll let them go. All right, Meliancy, you're starting to wear on my patience here, but we'll try to do this the right way. How are we supposed to restore a tree that's already been cut down? You humans are always like this. Destroy, destroy, destroy. And then when it's time to clean up your mess, poof, gone. Fine, fine. Since you're clearly clueless, I'll tell you what to do. There are these magic thingies that look like little feathers, the feather tokens. Throw one on the ground anywhere and a tree springs up. Your people's mages who tread the swamps more often than the others, they can make them. Buying a couple won't break your bank. My cousin Tiresia can also make them. She lives in the Gnarl Marches. Either way, you bring a handful of them back here, I'll let your goons go. Hmm, well, that's convenient. You hear that, Korax? Just buy some feather tokens from a magic shop and she'll let your people go. You think we just have piles of gold lying around to go throwing away at a magic shop? We can barely feed our families. Fair enough. Wait here, I'll bring the feathers. 
They'll be waiting right here. It's not like they have anything else to do, right? The Nixie chuckles as she tussles one of the lumberjack's hair. He smiles up at her faithfully. Alright, so we now have a new fetch quest. Though, in this case, we already have what we need. Thank goodness we met Bartholomew on the way here. Well, you have my feather tokens yet? There. Will you free the hostages now? Oh, that's more like it. Go on, hostages. I won't hold you back anymore. I used to think all you people were dumb and nasty, but you don't seem so bad. Let's be friends. Of course we can be friends. Chuckling, the Fae pushes you away. Ew, what are you doing? Stop that, come on. Here, just take this and hold off on that cuddly stuff, alright? Thank you, Meliancy. I have to go. Make sure you don't get lost. You people never seem to watch where you put your feed. Well, thank you kindly. I was already thinking there was going to be blood. I believe I was promised compensation for my efforts. I never go back on my word. Take this. Thank you for helping us. All's well that ends well. I think that's actually more than enough to cover the cost of those feather tokens. Okay, let's finish looking around. Oh, uh, let's look at that ring that Meliancy gave us. <laughs> ring of Protection plus two. Very nice. That'll immediately go to Amiri. All things considered, that's a pretty nice reward. Oh, looks like we've got some wolves. In due time. We're fully rested, so this should be a pretty quick fight. Right here, my friend. Nice. Nice and easy. What's that? All right. Looks like there's no exit on this side, so we'll double back through the forest and uh, head back to Stag's Fall. Guess we're done here. Oh, shoot. Okay, we're only a little over encumbered, so we'll just use a temporary strength buff. Oh, we do still have Bald Hilltop to worry about. Okay, looks like we still have almost three weeks before that becomes a problem. That should give us enough time for one more adventure. I tire. That's nice.
All right, um... The latest event told us there were new merchants in town, so... Let's go, uh, check that out. Okay, let's take a look at our map real quick. There we go. Ennio, the Traveling Merchant. Alright, let's go say hi. A tanned half-elf merchant gives you a polite bow. His thick chestnut hair shows a slight touch of gray at his temples, a sure sign that he's in his seventh decade. Mature, but not old age for a half-elf. I'm happy to welcome you, your grace. I am Ennio, wandering trader in curiosities. I have come to your lands recently and hope to stay here for a while, until the road calls me again. Tell me about yourself. I prefer to travel the wild and sparsely populated corners of the continent. The farther I wander from big cities and trade routes, the less competition I have from the rich merchant guilds. In my travels, I sometimes manage to acquire true curiosities. Of course, sometimes I get into trouble instead. Few can boast of escaping a giant scorpion by climbing a mammoth cactus. I'd like to take a look at your wares. Hmm, not much to speak of, really. That shock longbow's not bad. Those boots of elven kind are a possibility, too. Though, uh, we do already have a pair. Well, that's fine. Always nice to, uh, have more options. Okay, let's get back to the, um... Oh, hold on. Zarsi. I've never seen her before. Oh, that's the, uh, new scroll merchant that comes with the Arcane Unleashed DLC that just came out. The tiefling girl looks like she is made of springs. She doesn't stand still for a moment, nodding her head, clicking her fingers, or tapping her foot to the melody only she can hear. Seeing you, she waves her hand quickly with a wide smile and starts jabbering. Your Grace, welcome. What do you want? Scrolls? I have them. You won't regret. My suppliers would bring even more scrolls for sale if you'll manage to attract more mages to your lands. More mages, more demand. More goodies for you. So go build them libraries. We'll both profit from it. Could you maybe speak a little slower? Sure, sure. As you wish. Who are you? Zarsi the Letter Gobbler at your service. The girl bows with a wide smile. Best spells, charms, jinxes, and hexes for the best baron across the river kingdoms. Buy it all, don't be stingy, you won't regret. Uh, right, um, where do your goods come from? A family business. I've got siblings all across Mendev. They pinch every, uh, I mean, they're really creative suppliers. And I sell it all. Get it now, don't hesitate, my goodies are great. Wow, I never want to talk to you again. Show me your wares. All right, looks like she's a pretty standard arcane scroll merchant. And she's got a couple of wands, too. I don't think I'm seeing anything over level 3 here, but based on what she said, we should see a wider selection once we've built our first library. Ah, and it looks like she's got some of the new spells that were added by the new DLC, too. Just a uh, shame we can't actually use those. Well, we're uh, already here, so let's grab a few scrolls for Silverleaf. Eagle Splendor. Fox's Cunning. Invisibility. Ah, 
Ah, and uh, sea invisibility. I think that's enough for now. Now let's just add those to Silverleaf's spellbook. Oh, uh, plus this bull strength spell. Very nice. Let's get to the throne room. Okay, we'll check the uh, event table in just a moment, but first, let's have a quick chat with the Storyteller. Storyteller, I've got more stuff for you to touch. Oh, now here is something truly impressive. These items once belonged to a dwarven smith, and they wish to tell us their story. The storyteller shakes his head sadly, but too much has been lost, too much forgotten. The story of this smith eludes me. Please, find the rest of the five missing items and return them to me as soon as you can. Oh, you found shards of the trailblazer's helm. If reforged, such a helm would serve you well. It would also share its story with us. For that, I would gladly take up the smith's hammer once more. Find the remaining of the ten shards and bring them to me. These shards, they were once part of the Forest Knight's bracers. I would be honored to restore this artifact for you. The bracers would serve you well for a long time, and we could uncover their story. If you manage to collect all ten shards and bring them to me... Okay, so we've got three artifacts that we're currently working on. The Trailblazer's Helm, which is ten parts. The uh, Forest Knight's Bracers, which are also ten parts. And the Ring of Reckless Courage, which is twelve parts. I guess we'd uh, better keep our eyes peeled. There's the uh, event resolution for meeting those new merchants. Oh, and uh, I guess that's it. We don't really have enough points to uh, do anything right now either. I guess we could rank up Tristian, but that would actually push us right up against that ancient curse. I'd rather spend that time adventuring. I tire. All right, Silverleaf, let's get some rest. Okay, at this point, um, we just need to sell off loot and uh, spend some time rearranging our inventory. You guys don't really need to see all that, so we'll probably hit the pause button here. Oh, but uh, there is one more thing I wanted to cover before we head back out. Aside from the new spells and the uh, new scroll merchant, the Arcane Unleashed DLC also added a new pet, Tiger here. A beautiful tiger-striped orange tabby. Tiger may not be the friendliest kitten, but he'll happily curl up next to you while you sleep. Now, um, it is worth mentioning that Tiger is actually based on a real cat, one that was owned by Strata Gemini, one of the uh, game's earliest supporters. Sadly, the real tiger passed away late last year, before the game was launched. So, to uh, show their appreciation, the developers decided to immortalize Tiger as an in-game companion. As a uh, cat lover myself, I can certainly appreciate that. Anyway, we'll be right back.
Okay. We've got about two and a half weeks before that curse goes active, so that should give us plenty of time to get out to Sorrowflow and back. We're already past the 30 minute mark, so we're not going to have enough time for Sorrowflow today, but let's see if we can find an optional location between here and there. Then we'll focus on Sorrowflow next time. Oh, or we could do this. Blood for Gorum! Okay, looks like we're up against a pack of ferocious wolves. Wow, they're not messing around here. Tear them apart! Oh, geez, <laughs> we've got even more to the right. All right, so uh, we're up against a full pack of ferocious wolves, plus an alpha. Let's do this. You know, uh, this is actually a pretty good chance to try out that directed blast that Silverly picked up. Let's see how much ground we can cover here. Oh, very nice. Well, one grenade and half the pack is dead. Not bad. Just letting the ink dry. <laughs> That's not bad either. That is not far. I'm listening. I am prepared. All right, all things considered, that was a nice little detour. As it should be. Let's see what else we can find out here. Lake Silverstep Village. Interesting. It's pretty far out of the way, but that might be worth visiting later. Arbor Rock. Okay, let's see if we can figure out how to get there. Oh, hey, and there's Varnhold. Let's see here. Established by Magar Varn and his loyal mercenaries, Varnhold is a frontier town made up mostly of single adults with an even distribution of craftspeople and farm laborers. The main buildings in the town are an inn, a church of Arastal, and a local grange where farmers can stockpile and trade their produce. The town is constructed around a ford on the Kiravoy River with a low, flat-topped hill rising above it. Atop the hill stands the hewn log stockade and blockhouse that was built for the colony's defense. I wonder what those guys are up to. Probably off having all sorts of cool adventures. Well, we'd better get back to our adventure. Arbor Rock like the Tours of Lebanese themselves, their foothills are also rich with caves. One of them hides within a flaky rock called the Arbor by some travelers. All right, let's check it out.
Let's see here. Okay, looks like a pretty small map. Ready for anything. We are going to have to rest soon, so we might as well set up some buffs. Everywhere I go, the pool hangs over everything. Those people say it was better before I opened it. I wrote it like I saw it. I saw Something bothering you? Anything is possible. All right, let's have a look around. Okay, we've got a corpse with some vendor trash on it. Nothing down here. All according to plan. Oh, uh, you know, our pets didn't spawn. Okay, looks like they're still affecting us, though. In due time. Ah, another cave. Those always have the worst things in them. Follow my lead. Well, let's check it out. Okay, we've got a medium earth elemental. I think we can handle that. Oh, yeah, we should be fine. That is not far. I shall end this suffering. Oh, okay. That, uh, huge elemental might be a problem, but, um... Let's see how that thing handles a few grenades. Alright, not bad. Let's uh, keep piling it on here. We'll have to keep an eye on our hit points, though. Yeah, I think we've got this. This should do it. Very nice. Let's see what that got us. A diamond. Okay, that's a start. I guess that's it. Three elementals and a single diamond. I guess that's better than nothing. Well, let's get back out to the world map.
Alright, let's see if we can find a way up to Talon Peak here. May we have a moment of respite? Well, it's definitely not this way, but I guess we can grab that coal mine while we're here. Yeah, we probably have to uh, follow the Crooked River. Let's just head back towards Sorrowflow instead. Oh, hey, uh, looks like something's happening at Silverhold. Ah, I guess we... Uh, Finally got our first randomized event. About time. Trade Taxes Some half-elf, trading fabric in the capital, discovered a loophole in the law, which made it possible to avoid paying most taxes. The news spread quickly through the Merchants Guild. Measures should be taken immediately, or the treasury will take a loss. All right, let's get uh, Tristan on that. The difficulty is only 13, so he should have a pretty good chance of resolving that successfully. And back to the world map. Oh, hold on. A uh, salt deposit. Let's grab that, too. Okay, we're almost to Sorrow Flow, so let's get some rest before we go any further. Oh, uh, actually, let's reset Silverleaf spells first. We're not going to have any clerics in there, so he'll have to pick up the slack. Yeah, let's drop one of the enlarged persons and pick up an extra cure spell instead. We might end up running into poisonous enemies too, so I guess we should swap the uh, false life for delay poison. Just a shame we're not level 7 yet. Then we could cast Communal Delay Poison. Alright, let's set up camp. Oh, and uh, we've got another event. Oh dear. Troll Invasion Keston arrived at the castle with reports of strange trolls swarming the Gnarl Marches. Yeah, that's not a random kingdom event. That's the uh, next major story event. We'll have to get back to the throne room to deal with this. Otherwise, it's just going to get worse. Alright folks, we're just outside Sorrowflow. We're past the 40 minute mark and um, I'm sure you can tell, but I'm starting to have some trouble with my throat. We'll hit the pause button for now, and uh, we'll pick up here next time as we meet up with Kaneka, find that uh, artifact she's looking for, and then hightail it back to Stag's Fall to uh, deal with these trolls. See you then.
Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Discord channel, the fan run wikis, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter. Links are in the description.